anybody. But there is a separate issue now, which is seeking barakah from the places where the Prophet Muhammad went to, and where he traveled to, and where he stopped, and you know, which he may have came into contact with. This is now a separate issue. <coughs> and, uh, or for example, a place where he might have prayed, or he, where he might have placed his foot or his hand. So regarding this particular issue, then there isn't any evidence, there isn't any text, there isn't any proof which has come that shows that the barakah from his physical body rubbed off and transferred to a place or a thing or a, you know, something you know, to, to, to that place. And such that now these things and these places now possess barakah and therefore tabarruk can be made through these places. There is no proof whatsoever in the sunnah or from the companions that you know anything of this nature to show that the barakah from the physical essence of the Prophet transferred to another place or another thing. And is for this reason we find there's no proof at all in the sunnah or from the sahaba that any of the companions used to you know seek out these places or used to you know seek these things for, for barakah. <coughs> so the Sharia position, therefore, is that wherever the Messenger وسلم, wherever he went, wherever he stopped, wherever he came into contact with, then it is not correct, it is not permissible to seek barakah from these things because this is open, it opens, opens up the door for the glorification and veneration of these things and it leads to, it is an avenue towards shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as the Shaykh mentions here, that never ever did a people start following the tracks or the traces of their prophets, except that they went astray. And in this regard, there is a statement from Umar ibn al-Khattab, and uh, he, there's a narration in which one of the companions, he mentions that I went along with Umar from Mecca to Medina. And in the morning, when we arose in the morning, Umar, he saw the people going in a certain direction. And so he said, where are they going? And so the people said they are going to a mosque in which the Prophet وسلم, he prayed. And so then Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu he said, indeed, the pro indeed verily the people before you were destroyed because of their veneration of the places of worship uh, where, where the prophets prayed and they used to follow the tracks of their prophets and they made them into places of worship. So whoever manages, manages to pray in these other mosques, in other words, in any other mosque, when the time for prayer comes, then let him pray. And whoever misses the prayer at its time, then let him continue. I mean, let him, meaning, let him not deliberately go and pray in these places. This is a statement from Umar ibn al-Khattab, when he saw the people following the tracks and the traces and trying to you know, seek these places, he said, this is wrong. Right? He said, this is the... This is the the, the, the reason for the misguidance of the people who came before in the sense that they began to follow the tracks and the traces of their prophets and they began to make them into places of worship. So we see that this behavior and this approach is something that opens up the door to misguidance and it leads to, you know, eventually it leads to people uh, committing shirk. And this, this narration is mentioned by Ibn Waddah al-Qurtubi uh, in, in his well-known book uh, is called Al Bida, and also mentioned by Ibn Abi Shaiba in his Musannaf, uh, with an authentic chain of narration with the Sahih Isnad. Uh, this narration from uh, Umar ibn Khattab.